Let's talk about loops in Python. Loops are something that are really useful if you want to do a task over and over and over a set number of times, or maybe until a different condition is met. They're also really useful for iterating through sequential objects like lists, dictionaries, tuples, sets, or strings even, right? So uh, loops in most of the languages stick to something that looks like this for some sort of iterator in the range of you're going to start here and you're going to go till there and it'll usually say the iteration like you're going to increase by one each time um, and python can do that right so we can grab this little snippet of code let's come over to spider drop it in there and this can work let's clean it up a little bit so we get rid of the tabs right there we go so for x in the range of zero to three we're going to print we're on time and it's going to say which which version of the iteration we're under when we run this, yeah, sure enough, it says we're on time zero, we're on time one, we're on time two, and since it goes up until three, but not inclusive, right? Like all slicing in Python, it starts here, but it doesn't include that one. It did the first three iterations, starting from index zero. So that's what most other languages use when they're talking about for loops, but in Python, you can do so much more than that, right? So for example, we said that it can iterate through lips, lists, dictionaries, tuples, sets, and strings. Let's do an example of that. Let's make a list of our favorite music. So we're going to call this list bands, and it's going to be populated with all of the best bands. OK, we've got our list full of radical bands. So now, what can we do with this using loop stations? Well, using loops in Python. Well, we can do lots of really cool stuff. The syntax for this is going to be really straightforward. We're going to say for, now we're going to say something that represents the items in the list. But you don't have to name it like anything specific, right? You can name it whatever you want. We can call these like for rad bands in bands, right? So for some sort of element in the iterable bands, right? For rad bands and bands, can iterate through them. Let's just have it print out the name for one thing, right? Let's have it print rad bands rad bands is the item and since it's already a string we can just send it just like that and it will print out the bands that are in our loop so this is pretty cool let's run it and sure enough we did our first three things from running from zero to three in our regular loop so that's these first three here but then it listed out all the names of the bands right so that's pretty great um, it's a really simple way to iterate through these things right we can also do something really cool we can use the enumerate command so we're going to do enumerate what enumerate command does is it, if you give it a string and you apply the enumerate uh, command to a string, it not only pulls out the value at a string, but it pulls out the index associated with it, <clears throat> which means we're not just going to be pulling the string, we're also going to be pulling a number representing the string. So let's just write num, right? So for the num representing the enumerate value and the rad bands, let's go ahead and we'll say that um, rad bands, and then we're going to put comma is band number and then we will have it give us the number all right so let's run that and it says jimmy eat world is band number zero pearl jam is band number one and what's really cool is with the enumerate command you can actually you can actually have it start at a more normal number not like python starting at zero you can over here under enumerate you can put start equals one and that's an argument that it knows what to do with. And it's going to now say that Jimmy World is band number one instead of zero. So this is a really cool thing. Um, in the old days of writing your code, you, this would have been a lot more work. There would have been many more lines of code. It's really convenient how Python allows us to work with for loops. OK, so what else can we say about these? Um, the range function, if you are doing it the old school way, um, from some iterator, from some number up to some higher number, you don't have to count by ones. You could count by something else, right? For example, if we wanted to go from zero to 10 and count by fives, great, we can do that. And you'll notice that it counts zero, then five. So that's possible to do, okay? Okay, if you're using a um, for loop and you need to stop before the loop is complete, you can use the break function. So for example, let's say, say that we're doing this, okay? now. After some time, we'll say if rad bands um, equals, we're going to use the two equals, that means we're doing a comparator, right? If it's equal to shaky graves, right, colon, then we're going to break. Like once it reaches shaky graves in the list, it doesn't have to keep printing the names of the bands. So let's run that. And now we see that, sure enough, the same stuff from before, but now it only did the first three bands. 
Jimmy World, Pearl Jam, Shaky Shaky Graves, and then it stopped because we did this break command. So that's how you can exit out of the loop before it's, uh, it would normally complete, okay? You can use the continue statement. So if you, for some reason, wanted to move on, like if this equals Shaky Graves, like let's move this down, actually. Let's do this. We'll move this below it, okay? So now we're going to put this right there. So the first thing it's going to do is it's going to um, check to see if you're on shaky graves. Then if it's not, it's going to continue, right? Otherwise, it's going to print the band number. So let's try that. Now when you run it, you see it, it prints one, two, but it does not print three because we told it to continue. Basically, before it could finish this loop, it skipped this line of code because we did the continue command and it went to the next iteration, which was band number four. So it skipped printing out band three and went straight to four because of that continue command. You can do other stuff. Um, the else keyword is what will be executed when you finish the loop entirely. So down here, let's come down and we're going to do else down here. Now what do we want to do after we enumerate all the bands? That's when we can then say, maybe we'll have it um, print. We'll have it print. There is no other good music. Sorry, Generation Z, with your Post Malones and your mumble rapping. That's it. There is no other good music. Okay. Um, you can do nested loops. If you do a nested loop, what's going to happen is it's going to go all the way through um, the loop in, on the inside before it iterates the larger loop. Let, let me show you an example of this. All right. So let's clear this out. Well, let's do this over here. We'll comment this one out for a moment. So control one to comment that section out. We're going to get rid of this if statement. And instead, let's have it print some. Well, first we'll do another for loop. So for, um, OK, this time we're going to do the letter, right? So the letter in rad band. So now we're not going to go within the, within the value of band, right? We're going to go letter by letter through this, and we're going to spell it out. Let's do that, OK? So for the letter in rad bands, we're going to print, um, let's see, we're going to print letter. And then we'll do a carriage return. So that's backslash n. Okay? So that should put them all in a different lines. This is probably going to be big. But let's try that. Okay? We'll get rid of this thing. Well, no, we'll, we'll leave that. And then we'll say is a band number. Okay? So let's run that. Okay, so if you look there, it went through all of them, all the way at the very top. It started with Jimmy World, and it, right, on lap one, it stepped in. Rad Band's value was Jimmy Eat World. So now it's going letter by letter through Rad Band's, and it's printing the letter plus a carriage return, like an enter line, right? So that put all these like that, Jimmy Eat World. And then when it got to the end of that, it stepped out of this inner for loop. It finished that inner for loop, and it came to this line, and it said, the band is number one, right? And then it came to our second one, which was Pearl Jam. It did the exact same thing and so forth, right? So you can do nested loops. Uh, you can do as many as you want, right? This is just two, but you could do as many as you want, okay? Um, you can do a pass statement inside a loop if it's empty, right? So if for some reason you wrote a for loop, but you didn't know what you wanted to put in there yet, you need to put a pass, right? Otherwise, it will give you an error if there's nothing inside of it, okay? All right, what else can we say about loops in Python, right? Something really cool you can do is list comprehension. List comprehension is a really fast way to create a new list based off of specific values in an old list. This is way faster than doing the regular for loop is to do list comprehension. Here's how the syntax work, works. You have some new list. The syntax needs to be some expression for an item that is in the iterable and then you can add logic, like if a, some condition is true. So let's do this. Let's say we'll call this bands with i, right? And what we want to do is we want to pull from this list up here only the bands that have the letter i in them, right? So we're going to do square brackets, right? Because we're still dealing with the list. So that's what the syntax says. So we want to, again, what is our expression? It's going to be a band. So let's just call it x in x, right? in it or, or x for x excuse me so the value is x for x in our iterable the iterable is our oops for oh, x for x in the iterable is bands 
if x, um, let's see, if, let's see, the letter i is in x. Okay, let's try that. So if that's the case, it's going to put them into a new list, which is called bands with i. So let's run it. It's going to do the big whole thing. And now we have a list up here, a new one, bands with i. And sure enough, it only has Jimmy World, David Bowie, and Dispatch because the other ones didn't have i in it. So this is way faster than going through a loop uh, like you would normally do to create something like this. And again, this is called list comprehension. You'll see this used a lot in Python. Also, it's kind of nice that it just crams it onto one line instead of like this big chunky block of text. This is exactly what you want it to do. You're going to return something for something in that list of things if some condition is met. Pretty slick, right? By the way, you can do this also with dictionaries, right? Dictionary comprehension is also possible. Um, the only catch is that the syntax is a little bit different. You have to have um, the new dictionary is going to be some returned key and value for a key and a value in some iterable, right? So let's try this out. So uh, this comes from my graduate student, Kai, who taught this class last year. I like this example, so we're going to do it. He started with the list of the elements in order, right? So this is going to start with um, starts with hydrogen, right? And then it goes to helium, right? Then it goes to lithium. Oops. After lithium, we have what? Um, beryllium, then boron, carbon, nitrogen, then oxygen, right? So we've got beryllium, then boron, then carbon, then nitrogen. and oxygen, right? And we could keep on going, but this is fine for now. So if we run it currently, what we're going to see is there's this element list here, right? Now this is just a list and it has them in order. But what would be great is if we could take this element and use that to get the period, the atomic number, because we know that that is the atomic number, just plus one, right? These values, if we added one to them, we would have a um, atomic number. So let's create a dictionary where this is the key and this is the value, right? The key is the name of the element and the value is going to be its atomic number. And we're going to do that with dictionary comprehension. So here's how it works. We're going to say um, element dict, right? So we're going to create a dictionary. Now we're going to use curly brackets because we're talking about a dictionary, right? So what we're going to do is, remember our syntax, we want um, the returned key and value. So let's call this number and um, x, right? for um, some key and value, right? So we're gonna say, so for some number, uh, comma, and x, right? Where x represents the element name. Oh, by the way, since it's a dictionary, that needs to be a colon, right, doesn't it? Um, also, we're going to return this value plus one, because we don't want the index to start at zero, because atomic number doesn't start at zero. It starts at one, so that's gonna increase it by one. This is gonna be in the iterable, which is our elements list, um, but, in order to get this value of this number, we need to use the enumerate command, which we've been using in this example earlier. Let's try that, see if it runs. Okay, so it's got an error. It says can only concatenate strings. So what does it not like here? Ah, this needs to be i, right? Okay, there we go. X was the value of the, like the string, and we were trying to add a, a number to a string and that was giving us a, an error. So now we run it i is not defined. Oh, that's because we're calling it number. Ah, sorry. This is the value of the string. So that is the key, is the value of the string. Number is the number coming out of enumerate. Okay, now it should work. So we come over here to element dictionary, and sure enough, now we have a dictionary where hydrogen is number one. Helium is atomic number two. Lithium's three. These are not in order because dictionaries are not ordered, but the key thing is we can pull out any of these and it'll give us the right one. So for example, we can come over here and we can type element dict and I can ask for the value of carbon right and it will tell me the correct atomic number six right which is right so that is how you can do list comprehension on both lists and dictionaries okay so list and, and dictionary comprehension now the last thing we want to cover in this um, is while loops uh, that's another type of loop that you can do and this one is until a certain condition is met then that's the while loop so let's do an example let's use the um, Let's create a variable called liar, right? So we're going to call this currently true, that somebody's a liar, right? And we're going to do a while loop. Oops. We're going to do a while loop 
while liar is equal to, we're doing two signs because it's a comparison, right? It's a logic operation. While it's equal to true, we're going to keep on doing this loop. Now, what are we going to do inside this loop? We're going to ask somebody's age, right? So their age is equal to, um, we're going to do input. Input is a special command that brings a string in from the user. So we're going to ask them their age. What's your age? Okay. Now, there's a couple problems here. First off, I did this right there. That means I need a backslash in front of it because that would normally be the end of our string. Okay. So what's your age? Also, this is coming in as a string, but age is an integer. So let's turn that into an integer. So we're just going to do integer of that. Now, we're going to check whether or not they gave us a crazy age or something realistic. So we're going to say if age is greater than zero, right? So it's going to throw out negative numbers. Then we're going to assume that they're not lying anymore. So we're going to say that liar is equal to false. Okay. So let's try and run this. What we find is the normal stuff we did from before, but now it's asking us what's our age. Let's try putting in a number that's crazy, negative five. You know what it did? It just ran all the way through. So it brought in that number for age. It found out that it was negative five, and then it checked. It says, is that greater than zero? And since it's not greater than zero, then they still must be a liar. And so while the liar condition is still true, it's just going to keep on asking, right? I could put in negative 10. I could put in negative 20. It's, it's not going to like it. Oh, look, uh, there's a mistake. I put in something negative 2 and then negative by, by accident. It tried to convert that to an integer from a string, and it didn't know what to do with that negative sign afterwards, and so it failed. Um, so let's try this again. This time we're going to put uh, we'll put negative 2, but now we're going to put positive 2. And it ends. It ends no problem. It left the while loop. So that's how you can do a while loop where maybe you don't know how long it's going to take for the right answer to appear. You can do a while loop until it appears. Just make sure that eventually it will or you'll be stuck in an infinite loop and you'll have to break your program. By the way, if this is ever running in, a, in an infinite program, you can hit the stop sign and it will break your program in the middle and you can go back and figure out what went wrong. So those are loops in Python.